Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 12, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I had the links in yesterday's show notes, but forgot to mention it in the podcast itself. Mark Baggett started uh, producing a new YouTube series. I think it's uh, pretty good. And the first episode that was made live yesterday uh, looks really exciting. It's origin stories for your favorite InfoSec tools. The first episode covers Security Onion and interviews the creator of Security Onion. That's sort of the theme of these videos. Mark will always interview the creator of sort of no one of those legendary InfoSec tools. I think uh, Metasploit with HD Moore is next. For links, just uh, check uh, the IC website or yesterday's show notes. And for anybody using OpenSSH, uh, take a look and make sure that uh, you stop using DSA as a key algorithm for OpenSSH. OpenSSH today announced that they will be removing DSA support from OpenSSH over the next year. Now, there are good reasons for that. Uh, DSA is known to be weak. It's based on SHA-1 digests. And well, as they say in the announcement, only has about an 80-bit worth of symmetric encryption equivalent uh, security, which certainly doesn't cut it anymore these days hasn't really been sort of the default in SH uh, forever, I think. So definitely make sure that you are not using any DSA keys. Juniper released 27 security bulletins fixing numerous vulnerabilities. A couple of highlights that I sort of spotted. There are a number of vulnerabilities being patched in Security Director Insights. One of them CVSS score of 9.8 is a vulnerability in log4j. So good old log4j still haunting us. CVE 2019-17571. And this isn't the only 9.8 vulnerability in security director insights. So definitely something that you want to take a look at. Also noticed there is a pre-authenticated remote code execution vulnerability CVE 2024-21591 in JunoS in the JWeb component. So again, uh, something that you probably want to take a look at. The other vulnerabilities haven't had a chance to go through every single one. Many of them are denial of service vulnerabilities, which of course are still concerning for the type of equipment you're dealing with here. And then we got an update from Soho for Manage Engine Active Directory Self-Service Plus. This is a product that has caused a number of problems in the past, which is why I'm mentioning it here. The vulnerability itself uh, does come in with a CSS score of 9.8, which sounds a bit high given that the exploitation apparently does require authentication, but not really a lot of details here from Soho about the nature of the vulnerability. Just something that you definitely want to patch given the criticality of this product in many organizations' security infrastructure. And Malwarebytes has a nice post about some of the recent developments when it comes to Atomic Stealer. As the name implies, this is an information stealer malware. It does steal cookies and credentials from a user system, and it targets specifically Macs. Atomic Stealer has been around for a while, but in recent months has been pretty well detected by anti-malware. Now, since the actor behind Atomic Stealer is actually charging sort of a monthly rental fee for the malware, they have an interest in sort of keeping it updated and keeping it moving forward. The newest feature apparently is using more encrypted strings in order to make it more difficult for simple malware signatures to pick up on it. 
typically users install Atomic Stealer because they think it's other software. They do have sort of an example where it pretty much looks like Slack. Also, during the install process, it will ask the user for their password. And uh, this is not necessarily that terribly unusual, but the dialogue looks very different than the system dialogue that you may see asking for a password during install. In this case, the password is then being used by the Atomic Stealer installer in order to get access to the system's keychain. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks everybody for listening. Thanks for leaving good reviews in your favorite podcast flat platform. And of course, as always, thanks for liking on social media and subscribing to this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.